All right, so I'm going to show you a couple little things here. The first thing I'm going to do is build a page, right? This is sort of like the five-minute web page. There's no need to copy what I'm about to do. A, I'm going to go really fast, and if you're focused on just copying what I'm doing, it's going to be pointless because I'm going to be changing it a bunch of times throughout, and you'll kind of miss the point. I just wanted to, this is more of a just quickly watch me put together a website. It's kind of like watch me do the five-minute website. But the other day I showed you how I keep a folder called Web Template here. And I just rename it to whatever project. So we'll just call this responsive. Right? And inside it, I have the index file and the CSS file all set and linked up and ready to go. I'm going to kill this JavaScript link. We don't need to worry about that. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you about um, before we do anything is line six. Okay? Line six is a new addition you're going to want to add whenever you make a mobile-ready website, a responsive website. And so this, there's, you can look up all the details, what everything here means, but the short version is basically this. What we're saying is that we want the site's initial size when it's loaded up in the viewport to be scaled at 100%. And what I mean by scaled, look here when I open, let's just open this website here. There's nothing on it, but... Okay, you can see I'm, I scrolled up and you can see how, how big that looks and then I scroll down and it, it's getting finer and smaller, right? Let's just put a little bit of content in there. Just, uh, hello. And so you see the hello right there? If I scroll up, scroll down. What this line here means is we're talking about the mobile devices here that it'll be scaled at 100%, and that'll be the minimum scale, and it'll start there, and then the user will not be able to scale it, which means no pinching and zooming, right? Having the pinch and zoom, that's fine for whatever year the iPhone came out, 2001 or whatever, 20 years ago. That's not fine for today's world. No pinching and zooming. So that line six will will deal with all of that. If you just, just copy it and put it in there. Don't memorize it. I don't have that memorized. I just steal it from my other sites when I need it, okay? All right, so we're just gonna call this responsive. Actually, it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna do Ozzy Osbourne. No, we'll do Iron Maiden today. All right, and let me just add my language attribute here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do, again, the code I'm about to type, don't, this is something you should be able to do in your sleep at this point, so don't bother trying to copy this. Um, but I'm just going to put some navigation here. And uh, UL, LI, anchor tag, going to nowhere. All right, so about, or we'll do home, LI, and one, two, three, four. And this will be about Iron Maiden. And this will be contact Iron Maiden. And this will be products you can buy. Okay, don't forget to close the UL. And nav. Okay, quick question. Don't need to answer out loud, or you can if you want to. Could everybody do that, right? We all know that's that's should be, that's like day one stuff pretty much, all right? Next up, we're going to do a div here that's going to be called main is just going to hold the main content here of an H1 that's uh, Iron Maiden or a G1 and then an image which source will equal image Maiden which I haven't downloaded that yet but we'll get that in a minute um, I'm assuming it's going to be a JPEG we'll find out and let's close that div and I'm going to put some basic content in there right all right ooh nice so Iron Maiden or Mater. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Maiden. There we go. All right. So uh, images. And let's do. There's a good one right there. I'm trying to find what the band on it. There's a good one right there. I'll do that one. I need a big one, though. Let's find a large one. So tools, size, large. Oh, that's a cool one right here. OK. 
Okay. So save that and it is a JPEG. Good. Inside of my image folder. Again, this is all stuff we should know about. And then we're going to look on their Wikipedia page and just steal some content. All right. Oh, I said Maiden Wikipedia. <laughs> I meant Iron Maiden. All right, there we go. So just grab this. Now, I think I've shown you guys this trick before, but just a friendly reminder, this is very useful in the real world. I do this all the time, okay? When you get copy from whoever writes the copy of the company you work for, whoever your client is, it's going to be, they're not going to put the HTML in it for you, obviously, right? So it's going to be plain text like this. Just copy and paste it in there. And then tab it over to line up how you want it. Then if you turn off word wrap and just get rid of the space between the lines here, and you can use the highlight trick, shift alt, put your P tag there on multiple lines at once, and then turn word wrap back on and you can see clearly where the endings are and just copy and paste your closing paragraphs there. Okay. And here is our fabulous website. I spelled Iron Maiden wrong there, apparently. Okay. Well, that image is bad. It's all white like that. I don't like that in the background. Let's find a better one. That's better. All right. So that's our basic website here. Step one, build the website. Step two, style it, right? All right. So I'm going to change the background to yellow. There's a yellow image I have. Okay. And I want to make that into a menu right there, right? So we remember the very first step in making the menu. We make the nav, the UL, LI anchor, and the nav, UL, LI display inline block, right? That's the first step. And then all the rest of the style, we do it on the anchor tag, right? So we'll give it some padding. pixels, font size, I don't know, 30 pixels, 50 pixels, and color, give me color, Jedediah. Um, purple. Purple. And let's do font family. It's a really cool one that I like for this, Google Fonts. All right, let's pull up, uh, I think it was called Rock. Yeah, right there. Okay, so let's just grab this. This is our style sheet that goes to that font. Put that in our HTML. And then here's how we call it. Right there. All right, let's see what it looks like so far. Awesome. All right, let's get rid of that text decoration. None, and we'll center the menu. Okay, pretty good. All right. Um, that's, oh, I, you know what? I'm going to change that from purple because it looks like it's visited links, right? So let's just make those black. That's better. Okay. Now I want to, my div, I want to center the whole div. I want to make it not fully the width of the website. So my div here, div.main, will give it a width of 75%. <coughs> give it a background color of black. And we'll make it margin 20 auto. Looks pretty good. Right now, of course, my text disappeared, right? So let's should deal with that. Paragraph. Font size, like, I don't know, 35 pixels. Color, white. Uh, padding, 20 pixels. Margin, about 10 pixels. And here's a new property for you. Okay, ready? Line height. 
And I'm going to put a silly number here to show you what it does. See how it squishes the text there together? Because the line height is only 5 pixels, but the font itself is like 35 pixels. Okay, obviously not the effect we're going for, but I wanted to show you what, what, it, can, what it does. So I'm going to inspect that and then come over here to my style right here and using my arrow keys, just change it to until it looks the way I like it. Okay, so I don't know, about there, 40, 45 looks good to me. Okay, so there we go, line height, 45. So this looks okay, right? Um, somewhere up here is, it says Iron Maiden right there, okay? Let's deal with that real quick. All right, and we'll just give that the same font family here as the navigation and color white and font size like 65 pixels text align center margin bottom like 35 pixels nice give it margin top and bottom too just do margin 35 And let me fix that image, and then we'll be in business here. Okay, so the image, I'm going to center that. So display, block, and margin 20 pixels auto. Nice. Okay, uh, something's going on here. I put a top padding on that H3 there. Why didn't it go down? You saw that, right? I put a, or not a pat padding, but a margin right there. 35 pixels all the way around. Why didn't it go down? The, the answer, that might be why. The answer is I don't know. So how, if we don't know, how do we solve it? How do we figure it out? Put a border on it, right? So let's do that just to troubleshoot it. Okay. Border, two pixels, solid red. What's that? Make what in line? Uh, no, it's an H, uh, H1. H1's default is a display block, unless I changed it on accident. I did not. So I'm trying to push that, that margin down, right? So let's take a look at the inspector. I've had this problem happen before, and um, <laughs> it's weird what fixes it. Uh, so here we go. Right here, my margin, if I increase that, Look what's happening to the box. Something weird's going on here. Okay? So we don't we, we need to figure out what's going on. Well, if I put a border on that box, the div. I'm oh, sorry. Border two pixel solid blue. See what's going on here? The moment I put the border on, look what happened. Fixed it. Why? So let's turn off the border and it goes back, okay? So any thoughts of what might be causing this? Yeah, I have no idea. I don't, I have no idea what caused it. It has something to do with the, the box model and it has some, but I have it on box sizing border box right now. Uh, everything's on box sizing border box. Let me see if I explicitly put it on here. See if that changes anything. But I'm going to show you a little workaround to get around it. And that does not fix it. Yeah. So the. Say that again? It may be a browser thing. Um, it's the weirdest thing. I'm not sure what exactly is causing that. Um, and I've seen it before. It has, it's happened before. And the way I fix it, when you put the border on it, as you can see, when there's a border, it works just fine. And uh, I, I, it's something to do with the box model that I'm not 100% sure what's causing it. And I've never done the research to figure it out. So the way I deal with it, any thoughts on how you can fix it? Yeah. Make the border black. Make it match the background, right? It's stupid. It's a stupid thing, but it works. So I'm going to make it one pixel solid black. I know it's stupid, but whatever. 
Uh, I don't think you can do that. Let's try it, maybe. I've never tried that. No, no. I mean, you can, but it won't show up, right? So anyway, that's the cheap solution. It works, right? Someday I'll figure out what the deal is with that. I have no idea, though. All right, I'm going to turn off the red border up here. And we should be good to go with the site here, right? This is a site that Iron Maiden would be proud of. It's fabulous. Okay. All right. So we've built a site. This essentially was like the five-minute website, right? It took a few minutes. But, but now the question is this. And just answer this to yourself. Everything other than the one or two new properties we looked at, line height, and I think there was maybe one other one, could you do that? And roughly as quickly as I did it, right? Um, and again, if, you, if you're not there, that's fine. But here's where you don't want to be. Jeff, what did you just do? I have no idea. You don't want to be there, okay? If you're there, let's talk after class or in my office or whatever, okay? Because you, what I just did there should not be new or confusing to you. And I mean, I just wrote about 30 lines of CSS here, and all of it was pretty straightforward stuff. We know how to do, deal with menus with these few lines of code here, and we just centered an image and a couple other things, right? All right, so we have our website. Now, the next step is to see what happens as we shrink our device. This is the real reason we're here today, right? All right, so let's take a look here. If I resize it, we saw some problems there, look at that. Already see that? That's a problem. See the image breaking out there? Okay, but now let's just look at it slowly. Here is how I do this in the real world. I open up my browser and I, I make it to where it's not maximized, where I can resize it by dragging. And I resize and I just watch it. And I scroll down, look and see how the text is looking. And I just start watching things. So is there anything right about here that bothers you as a potential designer? I'm not a designer, but... There's something here that bugs me, but maybe it won't bug you. That's fine. There's no rules. It's whatever you want. Can't see the text anywhere? Can't see the text, right? That bugs me a little bit. Yeah? The other thing that really bugs me is that I feel like that, that black section is starting to get too narrow, and, you're not ha and you have too much of a yellow border on the side there. Because no matter what, 75% of the... the um, page will be taken up by that that section there well my thought is somewhere right about here maybe I can make it not 75 but make it 95 percent right I don't want to have it 90 percent when I'm here that's too much I don't want it to be that wide but maybe when I'm about here okay so there there are plugins you can add to your browser that will tell you what um, your dimensions of your browser is like right now what is the width of my browser and I have this one here where my mouse is but it's not working I don't know why it's broken and this is the second time I've had to change the plugin that I've used because the first one stopped working and now the second one's not working so I don't know what's going on there but we can just guesstimate I can guess that this is about uh, 1200 pixels my browser is about 1200 pixels wide all right so here's how we fix this in our CSS we need to write what's called a media query, right? And here's the syntax, at symbol, media, and then in parentheses, we put a width, right? And we put a max width, and I'm going to put 1,200 because that's how wide I think it is. And here's what this means here in line 32. This means that apply the following styles at any width up to a maximum of 1200 pixels width. So everything that's gonna be on line 34 up there will be applied only if my browser is 1200 pixels or smaller. That makes sense? So I'm guessing my browser is 1200 pixels right wide at the moment. Let's just do a little test here. I'm gonna change, let's change, that's not a real thing. <laughs> just regular CSS code goes in here. I don't know what happened there just now, guys. Uh, I'm gonna change the main, the background color, to red, that's not what I'm gonna do permanently, but I just wanna see if I'm in the right area here. So now, when I resize it, when I reach 1200, the background of that black will change red, right? I was pretty close, I told you, I guessed 1200, and look how close I was, right? So now I know that my media query is working, right? As I resize, it changes. When I get to 1200 pixels, it applies this style, 
instead of whatever the other style was, all right? So I just want to change that to be width of like 95%. And now that looks way better, right? So when we're here, it looks good. And then when we get down to the smaller size, it looks better that way, okay? Make sense? Pretty easy. All right, now let's see what else is going to happen. Let's keep shrinking here. And this is exactly what I do in the real world, guys. I just sit here and drag it until something happens. Look down. I'm looking at the text here. Text looks okay, but what do you think about the text? What do you guys think? Yeah, it's kind of big and it's, it's a little bulky in that. Like that paragraph right here looks pretty darn long, right? So maybe at the same break point here, 1,200, I'm going to also change my paragraphs to have font size, what was it before, 35? Let's try like 25 pixels. That's a little better. Now I maybe want to change that line height, right? So line height will be uh, 35 pixels. That looks pretty good. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do we like or not like about this? Oh, there's a problem right there, right? Okay. What else? There's no rules here, guys. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, the, the, this image is going to break in a few minutes, right? right? Um, what about the menu? Though? I don't, I'm not digging that, right? So I call it right about there. That's probably about 700 pixels. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say uh, I would probably convert the menu into like a drop down or something. Yeah. So let's we'll we'll do that in a minute. Let's just see if we can adjust it as it is. But let's we'll work on that in a few minutes. A drop down. But right now, um, like about, I'm going to guess that's, I'm going to say 900 pixels. So let's make another media query, right? At media, max width, 900 pixels. And when you're 900 or smaller, you get this style. Uh, first one I'm going to do is change that main to be width 100%. So the black will take up the whole page there, right? The reason I want to do that is take a look here. This is in, in the world of programming. We call this white space regardless of what color it is. So this yellow, which is white space, is this much, plus that black is that much. That's a lot of real estate on a small device. Also, when you consider that it's on both sides, that's a lot of space. So if I had the, the black go all the way to the edge and I changed the margins on the sides of the paragraphs, I can get more, maybe a whole word or two more per line uh, on the page, right? So I'm going to make this main uh, ma uh, width 100%. And I'm also going to change the paragraph to have a margin, le oops, margin left of like two pixels and margin right two pixels. Let's just start there. Yeah, it looks way better, right? I think that yellow looks like crap in the first place. <laughs> but maybe that's what they wanted, right? Whatever. But And I'm doing it just to demonstrate how this stuff works as well. But I think that's better. You have a lot more space. And ar arguably, I could probably move some more space there, maybe change that, uh, because there's probably some padding on the main, right? So let's change this padding here to zero. And... Yeah, that didn't change much. Okay, it didn't really do anything. But this is pretty good. I, I like this. Now, we still want to deal with the menu here. And that, that was 900. So I was pretty dead on on my guess there, 900 pixels. All right. Now, uh, the other thing, though, let's look at this font here with the text. See how it's jagging on the right? That's left justified, right? Well, you can actually do what's just called full justification or it's just called justify. So text... Align, justify, and you get this full thing here, sort of like a newspaper column, which this looks pretty good. You just have to be careful because sometimes you'll get like big spaces here between the words, right? It's pretty good at evening it out, but every now and then you get an issue there, okay? So just kind of watch it and see what you think. I think I'm going to shrink up that line height just a tad here. Line height to 30 pixels. That's pretty good. That might be a little squishy, but 
this is where that whole one hour of HTML ends up in 10 hour CSS, sitting here and just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, right? And going back and forth. Also, we at this point, really close to here, our menu is going to break, right? So let's just go ahead and deal with that. Now look at our menu. Do you see anything odd about it right now? really quiet in here. <laughs> There's one thing to me that's somewhat glaring that's bugging me, yeah. They're, they're different sizes. The fonts are? The, uh, from each other? Contact and iron maiden are different sizes. Well, yeah, but that's meant to be. I mean, if you want to change that, you could change that. So he's pointing out that the Iron Maiden is a different size than the menu, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it, it, but you could change that if you wanted to, for sure. Yeah. Um, the the margin space on the beginning of home and on the end of products is getting smaller than the margin space below them. Okay, so that's you're barking up the tree that's bugging me, right? Which the home about and contact, they don't look vertically centered, yeah. right? The top margin is more than the bottom margin. Or maybe there's a padding issue. How can I figure out where that spacing issue is coming from? Put a border on it, right? <laughs> Always. So I'm just going to go right to the UL and put a border on it. Two pixels, solid red. Okay. Okay, so now looking at that, it's clear where is the problem. Is the problem inside the UL or outside the UL? It's outside the UL, right? And it's probably the margin of the div, the top margin of the div, or it's the bottom margin of the UL. It's one of those two. You see that? Right? So this, in other words, this space here, to me, should go away. So that either means that this box here, this big black box here, its top margin needs to go to zero to move it up, or maybe it's the bottom margin of the, the menu here. I'm not sure which, right? So let's just try it. It would not be padding on the navigation because all the padding is contained inside the UL. Any padding that's in the UL is inside that red box. Oh, I thought you put it in. I, oh, on the nav tag, is that what you said? Yeah. Yes, you're right. It could be padding on the nav tag. Very good. I thought you meant on the LIs. Yeah. So you're right. It could be padding on the nav. In fact, let's just change that. You might be right. That might be where it's at. Um, I meant to put it here in the first place. So, oh, <laughs> order. So let's put the border around that actual nav tag itself. And so it's still, yeah, the pad is still outside the nav tag. All right, so let's set the, the margin bottom to zero on the nav and see what we get. So it's not that, which means it's probably the main div here. And yeah, it is right there. I've got 20 pixels top and bottom and then auto left and right, right? So if I did change that to zero, that, would, that, that fixes it. Um, let me see what that looks like full screen. Yeah, I like that better anyway. So I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not even going to do it in my media query. Okay? Make sense? I could have done that in the media query. Then it would only change when he got smaller. All right. Next up, though, let's get this border out of here. Next up, we want to make that menu a little bit smaller because any minute it's going to break. Okay? So we can do that on our 900 one here. And we'll just say nav ul li anchor. And we're going to say... Font size, what did I have? Uh, I have 50 actually, it's huge. So let's go to 40 pixels and we'll do, there's some padding in between too, right? I'm gonna get that padding a little bit smaller. Padding left to like five pixels, padding right, five pixels. Yeah, that's all right. And arguably, we could do better than that, but let's just play with that. And that breaks again at about uh, four or 500, maybe 600. So there are two ways you can think of this, lots of ways you can think of this. One, make my 900 a little bit more restrictive so that it won't break again in a few hundred pixels later, or make another media query at 600. What you don't want to do is have one at 400 and one at 450 and one at 500 and one at 550, right? You want to make your this thing lasts for a while, right? Your queries last for a while. So let me just see if I change this font to 35, if that 
first of all, if that looks too small, and it still breaks, so we're going to have to make a second one. But that looks all right. Okay. Maybe right here, we're going to make the drop-down menu. Maybe. Okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Let's deal with this image. I think at 900, I, I can actually fix that image without a media query. Okay. What could I do? Yeah, make the size of the image in percentages, right? So I can just set the image wherever you are, image, wait, there you are, to maximum width 100%. Oops. And that should actually solve that problem. Let's see. Yeah, now it shrinks. Okay, looks good. All right, so other than the menu, I think we're looking good here. Okay. We're going to talk about the menu in a second, um, but I want to make sure that we understand everything that just happened here. Notice there's no horizontal scroll bar, right? That's because of this little bit right here. That combined with our media queries, it will not have any horizontal scroll bars. So the, the user would not be able to pinch and zoom this. They would not be able to scroll horizontally. It will look just like this. And again, other than the menu, this looks pretty good. That looks, I think that looks decent for a phone. Okay, so let's look at a couple of tools here that are useful to us. Number one, if you right click on the code, go to the inspector. Over here, there's this little thingy right here. This is in Chrome now. I don't know about the other browsers, but in Chrome, there's this little thing right here. Click on that. And what this shows you is what this will look like on an iPhone 6, 7, or 8 Plus. Or, and that's in landscape mode, if I flip it to normal mode, this is what it looks like on um, in portrait mode, right? Uh, let's go look at a Galaxy S5, and that's what it looks like on there, okay? Let's look at iPhone X, and that's what it looks like. So on down the line, okay? Maybe that Iron Maiden, now that it's double lined, maybe you want to shrink that up a little bit, maybe not, okay? However, don't rely entirely on this one tool because it will betray you <laughs> for sure. I've had so many times where it looks great in here, and then on the actual device, it looks like crap. So it's a good starting point. So my take is this. All right, first of all, let's do 100%. That's what we really want, okay? My take is this. Turn that tool off. Start here, resize as we've been doing. Make your media queries based on resizing. Check it out in the tool by right-clicking, going to inspect. Check out that tool right there and check out all the devices that are listed, okay? And if you know the dimensions of some other device that's not there, you can add whatever you want. You can also check to make sure how it looks on portrait mode or landscape mode like it is right now, okay? And if that looks okay, here's the most important step. Test it on actual devices. I have a drawer full of old phones and old tablets. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I probably have about 15 devices that I just leave them in my drawer. And when I'm building a new web project, I charge them all and then test it on every browser and on every device. Now, here's the other thing. What it looks like in Chrome is not what it'll necessarily look like in Opera or Safari or FileZilla or FileZilla, uh, Mozilla, Firefox is what I meant to say, um, or um, Netscape Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> Don't program for that. I'm kidding. Uh, IE or Edge, right? I do not care about IE or Edge. I actually don't program for it. And I, I tell my clients, you want to work on Edge? That's extra money. <laughs> Same with IE, okay? The most important device to test it on, though, is whatever your client uses. If your client uses an iPhone 3, then test it on an iPhone 3 because that's what they're going to see all the time, Right? Even if it looks great on your iPhone 7 or 10 or whatever, test it on theirs. All right. So uh, anyway, you shrink the window like we did. Look at this tool like we did. And then test it on actual devices, okay, especially the one that your client uses. Or if it's a company and everybody in the company uses this particular phone, test it on that phone, okay? But once we're done, this looks pretty good overall. We're going to deal with the menu in a minute. Um, so a couple things I want to ask you. Thing number one. So today is the last day of Module 2. Module 2 is the first half of CSS. 
We have module four, which is after the midterm. Midterm is module three. Module four is advanced CSS. So today's lecture is sort of the capstone of beginning CSS, beginner stuff. And so what you just witnessed as I wrote the code should have been just a nice overview of what it looks like to put it all together. Write some HTML, style it up with some CSS, and see it all come together. And it didn't take that long, right? It doesn't take that long. Now, a lot of this comes with experience and practice and, and being able to troubleshoot things, but the troubleshoot, hopefully you learn some troubleshooting techniques. Put a border on it. Always put a border on it when you're trying to troubleshoot, where you can look for, is it a padding problem? Is it a margin problem? Is it both? Which element is that having the padding or margin problem, right? So hopefully you saw a bunch of stuff that was useful overall. Plus, we learned how to make them responsive. All right, any questions so far before we...